my father's house to my father's house to my father's house come and follow me to my father's house where there's joy 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 Jesus is the way Father's house, to my Father's house, Jesus is the way, to my Father's house, where there's joy, 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 it's not very far, to my Father's house, to my Father's house, to my Father's house. It's not very far to my Father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. And follow me to my Father's house, to my Father's house, to my Father's house. Him and follow me to my Father's house. Where there's joy, joy, joy. We gather as a people of joy in the midst of our ordinary time, recognizing God's presence in our midst in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We hear in our gospel reading Jesus in the house of our Lord, uh, making sure that his presence is known and allowing others to see the work of the Father in his life in his house. Uh, we gather in the house of the Lord here at St. Benedict to also do the same, but we fall short in oftentimes recognizing uh, God's presence in our own midst. For those times, we ask for Lord's pardon and forgiveness. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. the spirit we come for the feast and the score 
And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak to midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it. For he was standing higher than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people there, hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra the priest, scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The 
fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart Find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now, the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ body and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to complete a narrative of the event that had been fulfilled among us, just as those who are eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word, ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything uh, accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings that you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read a scroll handed to him, a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. 
He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, of recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed free, and to proclaim a year of favor for the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently upon him. Jesus said to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. At this time I'm going to invite uh, Joseph Blay to uh, begin and uh, enable us to hear the word of God and words that are shared through her own faith experience. So come on up, Joe. So, New Year's Day dawned bright and early, and Mass was scheduled here for 10 o'clock. So I was the assigned reader. So I got here about 10 to 10, and I started doing what we're supposed to do when, we, when we're a reader. I, le I checked to see if the lectionary was here, and the light worked and the microphone was on. But I looked and there was no microphone. Okay, so I knew that the microphone is kept in the sacristy, so I thought, well, I'll go get it. But when I walked across between the front altar and the back altar, I was met with a row of Christmas trees. And the trees were beautiful. They were lit up right. She might remember, we just took them down about a week ago. And I could see into the sacristy, over the trees, but I couldn't see through the trees. There was a little tiny space. I knew, no way I'm getting through that. And I was kind of puzzled. But then Father Paul had come out, because he was going to say the Mass, and he was sitting over there. And I said, how do I get back there? And he said, well, come this way. And he showed me that if I went around the trees, I could go behind and go into the sacristy and get the microphone. And that's really sort of what Ezra did today. Because after he had done all this talking to these people and telling them all the do's and the don'ts and reading the Jewish law, he then finally showed them a way through all of that to get to the whole message. He said, go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks. And a lot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to the Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. But can you imagine how exhausted these people must have been at that point? Remember, as Dion told us, they listened from daybreak to midday. So I figure it's about six hours. And I can't tell from the reading if they were kneeling the whole time or did they get to sit. But even if you're just sitting, imagine six hours of listening to what you can and can't do. That's a long time. It's sort of like the worst Zoom meeting you can attend. So in fact, for many of us, I think just listening to the three readings today was a challenge. All of them were longer than we usually hear. And we actually got a break because Dion read the, the shorter version of the second reading. So it's challenging us in some bit of wisdom or guidance to take home. We heard so much. And Ezra proclaimed, rejoicing in the Lord must be our strength. But what does that mean? So St. Paul told the Corinthians, and us by extension, that we are all individually parts of Christ's body. And some of us are weaker parts than others. So where does the rejoicing enter the picture? What practical things are we to do that will bring the rejoicing that is our strength? Where is our path through the trees? So I thought, well, could the answer possibly be in the gospel? And as a matter of fact, I think it is. Because finally we get some clear instructions. Listen to Jesus as he preached 
in the synagogue in Nazareth. Heed his words as he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Well, there you have it. No problem, no ambiguity. Just bring glad tidings to the poor, liberty to captives, sight to the blind, and freedom to the oppressed. There's nothing mysterious there. So I dare to say most of us are not financially, physically, or emotionally ready to completely fulfill this mission. But we can all do something. We have to remember that the way to take down a six-foot brick wall is to remove one brick at a time. So now this new year is almost one twelfth gone. And if you're like me, you can't honestly say you've done anything or much to make this year any better than 2021. So I think because of the disruption COVID has played with our lives, most of us are just stuck. We are aware of things that need to be done, but lacking the initiative to do them. At home, we still have our Christmas tree up. I mean, we unplugged it, but it, it's still up. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of, I feel sort of stuck, you know. But I recently read a, a Dear Abby column, and she offered a few suggestions of how we can at least attempt to fulfill our mission. She calls her resolutions just for today. The premise being that all of us can do something difficult or out of our comfort zone just for today. So we can choose to be happy, to not brood about yesterday or obsess about tomorrow, but just be grateful that as Julie told us a few weeks ago, today we won the you get to live one more day lottery so we can start small. We can move our neighbor's carts from curbside to their gate after waste management has serviced the neighborhood. If we know someone who is blind or has limited eyesight, we can offer to occasionally read to them or help them with their shopping or cooking. We can reach out to someone we haven't seen or heard from in a while just to see how they're doing. If we're healthy enough, we can donate blood. It is a life-saving fluid that can't be bought or manufactured. And rather than yell at the TV in despair over some of the shenanigans in Washington, hello, cinema and mansion, we can be more politically active. We can call our senators or representatives or the White House and express our opinions. We can write them postcards or emails, which are better than letters because they don't have to be inspected first. We can contact our local newspaper. We can attend rallies or participate in online forums. We can pray that cooler, smarter, more moral minds will prevail. We can respect the body we have been given by eating healthier or exercising or even just wearing a good quality mask that covers our nose and mouth with no gaps on the side and stays in place when we talk. We can get vaccinated and boosted and encourage our family and friends to do likewise. If we know there's no chance of changing their mind, we can refuse to engage in conversation with people who espouse crazy theories about elections and vaccines and horse medicine as a cure for COVID. 
We can be kinder to store clerks and restaurant employees and rideshare drivers. We can tell a stranger we think their baby is cute or we like their car or the color of their hat is fabulous. None of these actions are earth shattering, but each one can connect us a tiny bit more to our fellow man. Legendary football coach Vince Lombardi once said, a measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. So each action can make us a more useful part of the whole body St. Paul wrote about to the Corinthians. At the end of the day, when we say our prayers, we can decide if we manage to find our way through the trees to the presence of the Spirit of the Lord. Did we, in some small way, bring glad tidings to the poor, liberty to the captives, sight to the blind, or freedom to the oppressed? Did we fulfill the scripture passage? Your word, O God, has been proclaimed and explained for our understanding. Inspired by your teaching, we respond in faith and with prayers for the world. That the church may continue to promote reading and reflection upon the word of God as a means to promote Christian unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That legislators at every level may more carefully seek the truth as they work to enact laws that are both wise and enlightening. Let us pray to the Lord. That all children who have yet to be born may be welcomed to a world where they will be affirmed and valued. Let us pray to the Lord. That all in this community may deepen their knowledge of the faith as they become more and more a part of the one body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Annette Carrier, Jenna Hadnot, and Tyrone Smith, may share the glory of eternal life and for the intentions of this Mass offered for the happy repose of the soul of Timothy Krashna, for the birthday of Mikaele Percival, and for the unhoused for safety and wellness. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own personal intentions, let us pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the people of Tonga as they recover from the disastrous underwater volcanic explosion last week. And of course, we continue to pray for peace in our streets here in Oakland. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, led by the certainty of the teachings they have received, your people come before you to present these prayers. In sure knowledge that you will hear and answer us, we confidently pray through Christ our Lord and let the church say, Amen. 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 Doubt the Lord. 
pray my sisters and pray my brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Amen. Accept our prayers and offerings, O Lord, and sanctify them. Grant that we may, or they may, profit for us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is indeed right and just. It is truly our salvation and our, our duty always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Until you come, until you come, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be freed from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. For the kingdom, And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord, we are your children, and we come before you to continually seek your presence, your, your reassurance, your comfort, your love, but yet you've given us your son, Jesus, uh, to allow us to see your presence in our own midst, that we may see uh, your son in each other. Help us, Lord, nourish by this bread and wine, by the word uh, that has been proclaimed and uh, preached, uh, that it may continue to be for us nourishment as children seeking guidance through your loving Son and by your fatherly care. 
We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Leonard. That was very nice. Thank you. Excellent. Beautiful. Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Morris. Thank you. Y'all beautiful, too. You know that? <laughs> I'd say that. You know, you know, yeah, I always know that, though. Uh, Joe, thank you for your preaching. You're always able to weave the one's own personal experience with what you see and read as part of our experience in this place called America and uh, how we negotiate through the trees, all the many different ways that we are able to seek God's light through those branches. So, amen. Thank you. Uh, Dion is always who uh, basically just uh, really takes good care of this parish and makes sure that uh, things are well read and well run, uh, which is uh, something I deeply admire. And of course, you, Romel, the genius of all who makes all those things, these things happen, I'm profoundly, deeply grateful as well, too. So, and the good people of God out there. Uh, some announcements. We um, here at St. Benedict have had a lot, of, a lot of our folks have had their own set of tragedies, so we want you to keep your own prayers, uh, different families. I know. Uh, uh, earlier this week, uh, we had a service for Deja Robinson. It was uh, places packed, and lots of young people who were really connected to her throughout the years. Uh, we, of course, remember uh, Jana Hadnot, um, uh, Annette Carrier, uh, Tyrone Smith, uh, and others who've lost loved ones recently. We continue to invite you to hold them close to your hearts. We would also do the same for those who have loved ones, loved ones in Tonga. We have strong connections here at St. Benedict uh, to people who have connections and are from Tonga, particularly the Moa family, so we draw close to them as they continue to hear the unfolding damage that has taken place uh, in our South Pacific uh, uh, archipelago in, uh, in Tonga. Uh, let's see, uh, thank you for those of you who are part of our ceasefire walk this past Friday evening. We continue to strive for and work for peace in our own flatland East Oakland community as we uh, hope for a uh, uh, lessened gun violence in our own midst. Uh, let's see. Do you want to say anything about your raffle? Sure. Can we? Uh, uh, sure. Say something about that raffle. So, um, the nice be in favor of Father J. Matthews Council 336. We are having a Super Bowl TV raffle. The raffle will be held on Sunday, February 6th, immediately following the 11 o'clock mass. This is for our scholarship program. The tickets are $3 each. Are two tickets for five. So please, if you like any tickets, please see myself or any of the knights of 336. And again, we always thank you for your continued support. This is for our scholarship program. We'll be giving away a scholarship to a deserving young gentleman of color who will be attending a Catholic high school in the fall. So we'll be giving away later on this year in the springtime. So thank you, thank you as always for your continued support. Get your tickets. Thanks. Amen. Thanks, Leonard. Again, a shout out to Leonard. Like many churches and public institutions, we're going back to pandemic standards or uh, pre-Delta sort of uh, arrangements with regards to everything from social distancing to the expectations by the county health department as well. So uh, Leonard was able to at least put us into a place where we're back to social distancing. Uh, we will remain open uh, and have mass uh, both virtually and in person at our regular schedule. But again, adhere to the recommendations of the CDC, our state and uh, county departments of health, uh, as well as the DOS and guidelines too. Uh, we just want to go and ask for God's blessings to those of you who are celebrating birthdays. So we would invite you to, if you're celebrating a birthday, we ask God's blessing upon you. So God of all creation, we offer you the grateful praise for the gift of life. Here are the prayers of all your servants who are celebrating birthdays, that as, a recall, as they recall those very special days, and rejoices in your gift, of family and friends and life and love. May they continue to be bestowed upon with your blessing. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. birthday. For all of you who are celebrating anniversaries of any type, whether it's a commitment you've made to another, commitment you've made to God, or maybe a commitment to yourself, we ask that the Lord may bless you and keep you, that the Lord may shine his face upon you and be gracious to you, 
and the Lord may look upon you with gladness and give you his peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This liturgy is ended. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.